Hello and welcome back to the channel. It has been a while. It's been around two years since the last time I've uploaded and I thought a good re-entry video would be a tier list on Stanley Cup odds. So I have five categories for the teams that are currently in playoff spots and I put the teams that are no longer in playoff spots despite the fact that some can move into playoff spots into the out category because if you're not in a playoff spot right now you don't deserve to be ranked. Get into one, then I'll rank you. But uh, if you like videos like this, subscribe. If you're coming back from my long hiatus, say hi in the comments. Comment your opinions, but let's jump into this. The first team that I'm going to discuss, I'm going to go west to east here, is Dallas. Now, Dallas is an interesting team. Uh, the way they're built, I think, is designed for the playoffs. They have Jake Ottinger, who we saw last year in the playoffs, you know, Stood on his head despite a series loss to Calgary. Now, you look at their core and who they're led by, it's very young. Rupe Hintz, young guy. Jason Robertson, young guy. Second line center right now, Wyatt Johnson, 19 years old. So you kind of wonder, it, are the young players there yet? And I lean towards no, to be honest. I, I don't see it. But when you look at the mix of veterans and youth, and goaltending, there's a chance here. So I think Dallas you put into the dark horse category because they are leading the division right now, but I think despite that, you can still put them at dark horse because I don't think they're a pretender. I don't think they're quite there with the contender spot. I like the Max Domi acquisition too. I think that had some nice depth and grit. But uh, I think you got to put Dallas in dark horse. Uh, and then we jump to Minnesota. I'm going to put Minnesota in no. Now, that might seem harsh off the rip, but I think a team that relies too heavily on one player like Minnesota does, Kaprizov, can only go so far. And I know no is kind of a brutal category name, but I'm just saying no, no, they're, they're not going to do it. They're, they're not even like a pretender because I don't think many people like believe in Minnesota to go far. So I'm just putting Minnesota in no. Uh, the Jets are the next team to talk about. And when you have Connor Hellebuck and you have the offensive talent they do, you, you have a shot in a series. I'm not sure Winnipeg's deep enough, though. You look at their bottom six, it's it's not good. But then you look, you got Nemestikov, who was added to that. Cole Perfetti will eventually come back from injury. It could add a boost to them. Uh, I think anytime you got Connor Hellebuck, you're a dark horse to make a run. So I'm going to put him there. I'm going to put them there. Uh, we then jump to Vegas, and I, I'd say Vegas is a firm contender. Firm contender. You look at them, they have a lot of playoff experience, Where whether it's Petrangelo who's won a cup, Alec Martinez who's won a cup. Uh, you look at the core like March or so, William Carlson, who's been there for a while. Uh, and they finally have the one thing they hadn't had in those previous playoff rounds, which is a number one line center, a true star in Jack Eichel. He's around a point per game right now. Uh, could have played a little bit better this year, but he's dealt with an injury here and there. But, you know, he's healthy now. And the thing that kind of makes me up in the air about maybe moving them to pretender is goaltending situation. But it seems like whoever they have put in net this year seems to play well. And I just think with the way they're built... The West is not as strong as the East. If Vegas was in the East, they probably wouldn't be in a contender spot. But I think with the depth they have, how they're built, how they play in the West, I'd say Vegas is a contender to get to the cup final. I'd say that for sure. Uh, Mark Stone being out hurts, but I still think the team's deep enough to make a run. Their special teams is kind of mid, which is kind of a hang up for me. But I think I can look past that. I think I can put them in a contender spot. Uh, we then moved to the Kings. The Kings last year pushed the Oilers to seven games. Uh, they are here last year. Uh, I'm not sure the pieces are there yet, though, for them to be considered in the running to get to the Cup. I think I'm going to put the Kings in no. Okay, so they just added Eunice Corpusala, which is an improvement to their goaltender situation. It was, although ruthless, I think getting rid of Quick for this current group was the right move. Uh, a lot of their young players would need to step up for them to go far. Gabe Velarde, Arthur Kaliev, um, Quinton Byfield. They would all have to play above their heads for where they're at in their careers right now, in my opinion, for LA to go far. Could LA win a series? Yes, but I, I don't think they have the depth 
or the firepower to necessarily go on a run. So I'm putting them there. Uh, then go on to my second page of notes. We have Seattle. Seattle's also going in the no category. Uh, despite, if you look at their scoring, their stats, there's no real one guy who jumps out. But despite that, they are actually a top five scoring team in the NHL, which is kind of wild. Very balanced team. 16 players over 20 points. So if you look at them on paper, maybe this is their Vegas year where they make a run. But you look at their goaltending, this is why it's a no. Neither goaltender is above 900 save percentage. Uh, and when you need a point, when you need a goal and you need your elite players to step up, they don't have elite players. So I don't think you can realistically say in their first ever playoff run that they can be a dark horse or a contender. Next, we jump into the Avs, and I think the Avs are firmly in contender but i think you have to put them cup bound but i'm i'm thinking this is tough the west is tough because no real team sticks out amongst all of them as the clear cut favorite if you had to put them in a spot though i think you put them in contender they're not as good as they were last year they're not as dominant as they were last year they never replaced nazim kadri properly to put them firmly in cup bound in my opinion but you look at all the pieces, it, it seems as though, yet not confirmed, Gabriel Landeskog probably will be back for the playoffs. I, I think they're just kind of slowly bringing him along. And I think the fact that they went out and got Lars Eller shows that they believe this team can contend. They were buyers, in my opinion, with that move, despite not a big buy. It's a depth piece to help during the playoff run. I, I think Landeskog will come back. McCarr is healthy now. McKinnon's on the team. Uh, Gorgiev has been good this year with a 919 save percentage. Francois, if uh, Francois, if uh, Gorgiev struggles, also 919. So the goaltending, I don't think has taken that much of a dip despite the loss of Darcy Kemper. While Kemper was good in the cup run, I think a lot of goalies could have filled that role. I, I think that was one of the few times you see a team go on a run to the cup final and it wasn't all to do with the goalie. No disrespect to Darcy Kemper. He played solid, but... I think I think they replaced him pretty well here. So I think you got to put them in contender firmly, but I wouldn't say cup bound just because they're not dominant enough. Edmonton, uh, I'm going to put them in pretender, and that's probably going to get a lot of heat. Uh, just because they have Connor McDavid does not mean they're going to win the cup, in my opinion. Uh, you look at them, they're heavily reliant on the power play. You cannot fully rely on the power play in the playoffs to get you to the promised land there at 31.7% conversion rate on the power play. That's 6% beyond the next team. Uh, if you look at their power play versus even strength goals, it's very tilted to being very dependent on the power play. And while that is great to be good at the power play and important in the playoffs, it is you don't want to be over-reliant on it. Uh, Stuart Skinner, 24 years old, has played around 50 NHL games. You're relying on him to carry your team and stop a lot of pucks because with the way Edmonton plays, very aggressive offense leads to transition against Stuart Skinner, against good teams, you might pay for that. Now, I'm not saying they can't make a conference finals, but I don't really see them going beyond that just because you look at their decor, it's it's nothing special. They have Cody Cece on the top pair. Matias Ekholm, good add in my opinion, subtracting Tristan Berry for him. That's a good move. That's a net positive. But you look at the bottom six. This team really does not get anything out of them. And in the playoffs, you can have the best player in the world averaging two points a game. If he gets those two points, you're probably losing 4-2, to 4-3 to three in a lot of those playoff games, even if McDavid's putting up two, three points a game, which is sad because... They should be doing a lot more with this roster, but I think because of that, you have to put Edmonton into pretender. And I think it shows because they're in a wild card spot. It's not like they're running over the league or anything. They they, they don't they don't deserve the hype that they're getting, that people are giving them. And I think it shows in the standings, and I think it will show in the playoffs. Prove me wrong. Uh, we then move on to the East, which we will start with the Carolina Hurricanes, who I think you got to put in contender. Out of respect for how well of a game they played, how deep their team is, um, their structure is insane. If you watch Carolina play, if you catch them on the, if you're off a little bit, they run you over. Uh, their top four D, very solid, very solid. Defense as a whole, second best in the league in terms of goals against. Uh, their middle six scoring is a bit of a concern for me. Come playoffs, uh, I feel like their high end scoring is. 
fine. It could be better, in my opinion, as well. That's my only real concern with Carolina is, is your third line going to score? It's led by Jordan Stahl. He's not an offensive powerhouse. He doesn't give you that added scoring that you need to make a playoff run. He's good enough, though, to be an effective player in the playoffs. And I feel like this team could make a run to the finals. They, they've been close. In 2019, they made the conference finals. Last year, the second round, where they lost to the Rangers. Uh, it, there's potential here. I'm, I'm not sure I buy them as winning the cup, though. But stranger things have happened. And then move on to New Jersey. Uh, I think you put New Jersey in Dark Horse. But I'm going to put them in Pretender. And it has to do with the goaltending. Uh, anytime that you don't really know who your guy is and they're all kind of playing meh, not, none of them are playing terrible. It's not like Seattle where I'm immediately putting you no because of it. I'm not sure they're quite a dark horse, though, because they're, they're a very good team. I, I don't think anyone would be surprised by them because just of how good they've been in the regular season. But I, I think they're pretenders. I don't believe in their goaltending. A lot of inexperience, too. Not a lot of playoff experience in terms of who needs to perform. Like Jack Hughes, no real playoff experience. I think Nico Heischer has a few games from that Tampa series a few years ago. Uh, their top six is very good. The addition of Timo Meyer, that is a player I believe in. I think the Devils are just a year away from it, to be honest. I feel like the Devils could be play like contenders next year. But right now I'm putting them in pretender. And may, maybe I'm being a little harsh, maybe I should. But I, I think their goaltending situation and lack of experience makes me just think they're gonna they're gonna have a tough go in the playoffs. We then move on to the New York Rangers, and I'm <laughs> I'm gonna put them in dark horse just because last year they made the conference finals. But my, I have a lot of concerns with this team. Defensively, They every time I've watched them play, they, they don't look like they have it all together all the time. They can score, but, uh, you know, they, they rely on Igor a lot, and Igor has not been the best this year. As a fantasy owner of Igor Shesterkin, uh, it could be better. It could be better. He's got about a 909 this year, which is not up to the level you expect from Igor. Can he flip it on in the playoffs? Sure. Uh, it's kind of hard just to do that, though. Uh, they'll be facing the Devils probably in the first round or Carolina or they I, I think they're locked into the third spot kind of regardless of what happens so they're going to face Carolina or New Jersey which is a tough matchup they, they can win versus either team though uh, I think you gotta go dark horse just because last year in the playoffs they turned up and they might just turn up especially with Tarasenko Kane uh, their scoring's just, they could go on a run just because of their scoring alone and all the depth and how they can run three lines I, I feel like running three lines is the most valuable thing that you can have in the playoffs is having a third line that can kill. The Bruins rode that to the Stanley Cup Finals in 2019. Penguins won Stanley Cups because of their third line with the Kessel, Bonino, Haglund line. It's a big deal, and the Rangers have that, so the Rangers are definitely dark horses in my opinion. Uh, we then move on to the Penguins, which I'm just going to put them in no. I don't believe in the team at all. Crosby and Malkin are actually having good years, but I, I don't believe in Tristan Yari. I don't think they're good enough this year to put them in pretender either, and I don't believe they can make a run. I really don't. I think I think Crosby and Malkin aren't at the height of their powers to be able to carry this skeleton of a team. It's really just Crosby, Malkin, and the band of merry men, and I, I don't think that's enough at this point in time to go on a run. And I don't think Pittsburgh fans look at this team on paper and say this team's going on a run. So I'm going to just put them in no. Uh, we then move on. We're only down to four teams. We go to the Islanders. This is also a no. They just they just don't have the scoring ability to hang with teams, and I don't think they're as defensively sound as they used to be. They do have the fifth lowest goals against, though. So they do have Ilya Sorokin, but I, I, I think that's just not enough, to be honest, with how low their scoring is, how just subpar they are. They're 24th in goals per game, which is the second worst in the playoffs of these playoff teams outside of Minnesota. Minnesota is the worst team in this conversation. I believe they're 26 in goals per game, if I had that written down right. Uh, if you're not scoring at a, at, a, at least an average level, you can't purely rely on defense. When you need the goals, they're not going to come for New York. They're not going to come for Minnesota. And they're probably not coming for any of the teams down here, except for maybe the Penguins. The Penguins, I think, have the best shot of these teams in the no category. But I'm putting the Islanders in no. You then go to Boston, which I think Boston, I'm biased here, I'm a Boston fan, but you got to put them in cup bound. You can't really find a real weakness on this roster in terms of how it's built. Every level is 
very well done. You look at their fourth line, gritty, hard nose, hard to play. Third line, producing at a good rate. Second line with Krejci and Pasta and Zaka, great production. The first line, Marshawn, Bergeron, DeBrus. No one wants to play any of those lines. The decor with Orlov added, he looks very good right off the rip. He's won a cup with Washington. It's just an elite decor. Linus Olmark is probably winning the Vesna. I know he's up there in MVP odds. He's top five in MVP odds, which no one's winning that by McDavid. But you have one of the best performing goalies. That the only thing you have with Boston really isn't really negative. It's more so concerns. And as a Bruins fan, my my three concerns that come to mind are Linus Olmark performing in the playoffs. Some goalies get to the playoffs and don't live up to the hype. I feel like the structure the Bruins have should alleviate that though. You then look at Posternock. He can go hot and cold, and if he goes cold for a while, it, it could cost him. And then Charlie Coyle on the third line. In 2019, as I mentioned earlier, he was a big reason as to why we got to the finals, just that production down low in the lineup. And if he can provide that again with his line mates, which are better this time, he's probably going to have Tyler Bertuzzi and Taylor Hall on his wings, which is insane on a third line. So I, I think the concern is how good Coyle can play. But he's looked great this year, so I, I don't see him dropping off. Boston has to be cut bound with just how the season's gone. Uh, you put Tampa into contender. I feel like Tampa you could also put into contender just because, you know, or cup bound. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put Tampa in cup bound out of respect and fear. Uh, I fear Tampa. Ta- Tampa's the one team in the entire league that I fear as a Boston fan just because Andre Vasilevsky... Victor Hedman, Kucherov, Stamkos, and Brain Point. I, I've seen it too many times of them just coming up with goals maybe they shouldn't get, stopping pucks like Vasilevsky that he shouldn't stop. And next thing you know, you're in the spin cycle and you're out of the playoffs. And Tampa do, does that to a lot of teams. They're just built perfectly, to be honest. They just haven't been performing up to it this year. But I, I feel like you can put them in cup bound, which may contradict the Burns cup bound because they're both in the same conference. But I respect for Tampa. Uh, and then the least pretender uh i i don't you can throw any stat at me it does not matter until you win around until you show that you can win in the playoffs and you play playoff hockey you, you're not you're not going beyond this now they have the talent for contender but i'm not sure they have the mental for contender the decor you look at it on paper it's not impressive. They don't really have that true number one guy. Morgan Riley is having a down year. Collectively, they're not terrible. They're just nothing that you fear. They You don't face Toronto's defense and go, oh, this is going to be a tough night. You go, we're going to have our moments and we got to convert. And then as go- with goaltending, you don't really know what you're going to get in goal from them. Ilya Samsonov, I'm not, I'm not really sure you're nervous about him if he's in net for the team you're facing. Uh, Matt Murray's probably not going to be back in time. Joseph Wool, who they mentioned, they're, they're probably not going to give him the runway to be the starter there. I, I feel like until they turn up and prove it in the playoffs, you can't really put them beyond pretender. Uh, so is there anything I want to change here? I, f- I feel like I feel like if I I can't I can't put the Avs in cup bound. I can't put Vegas in cup bound. There's there's no team in the West that's really like put the stake into the earth that says like we are that team so i don't th- i think it's kind of fitting that not a single western team is up there uh i don't feel good about having crosby and malkin in just no i, f- I feel like that doesn't sit well in my stomach uh dallas maybe as i i feel i feel like having mcdavid as pretender is also doesn't sit well with me maybe, maybe a little harsh on jersey i feel like jersey I'm gonna put them in dark horse. I, I feel I feel like that has to be a change. To be honest, I I feel like their inexperience doesn't really make them a pretender. It more so makes them a dark horse. So I am gonna make that change. Um, man, the Canadian fan bases are not gonna like me outside of Winnipeg. I, I didn't slander Winnipeg too hard. But overall, I I think it's a solid tier list. Um, this may change, but uh, yeah, that's the tier list. That's the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, you got a little peek into my mind and how I see the teams right now. Um, leave a comment with your thoughts that are different than mine. But that's it. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.